What's happening, YouTube? Back in the day, Gamer here. Thanks for tuning into my channel, and today I'm coming at you with one more video about NES game prices. And this is quite possibly going to be your favorite one, because it's the one about five of the cheapest games on the system that are still fun to play. And these five games are all at a five dollar price point. To put things into perspective, a double cheeseburger at McDonald's is like four dollars. So it's roughly the same price as one of these games. Another example is this cheap six pack of beer. Tall Boys, an inexpensive bargain beer, was about the same price as, actually, it was a little more than the cost of each one of these games. So, a six pack of cheap Tall Boys? Or a video game that you could play for over 30 years? You already saw the video I did on the most expensive Nintendo games in my system, and from there I did the games under $20, then I did the games under $10. Now we're doing games at the $5 price point, and this is going to be the last video, because you can't go below that, and I'll tell you about it at the end. But, each one of these games is at the $5 mark. Now the other videos, it was $20 below, $10 below. These games are 5 and some change. They're under 6 but, you know, they're about five bucks. So let's start off with one that uh, everyone, everyone is very familiar with. And you might not think about it just because you're so familiar with it and it's just always been there. But for $5.50, you should be playing Operation Wolf. Operation Wolf on the Nintendo Entertainment System is yet another NES disappointment. That's a phrase I'm coining right now. Disappointment. And obviously, it means a game that was ported from an arcade to the Nintendo Entertainment System. That was a big disappointment to you. Operation Wolf is definitely one of those games. It doesn't mean it's a bad game, but, you know, obviously, you're not holding a vibrating machine gun with a missile launcher. So it's not going to be nearly as fun no matter how cool of a game it is. But it is not without its charm. It's still a fun game. I don't have to say much because you're all very familiar with Operation Wolf, if not the NES, but definitely from the arcade cabinet in all its glory. I'm sure we can all recall standing in line back in the day at the arcade or your local bowling alley to get your shot at putting a quarter in there and holding this machine gun, taking out bad guys. While those fantastic glory days can never be relived, and this version isn't quite worth standing in line to play, it is well worth $5.50. There's not really any arguing that one. Now these next two games, which makes the first three games on this list, actually all cost $5.50. So, the next game on the list that costs $5.50 is a game that everyone here probably purchased for $0.99 cents to $1.99. It is the most common game I see when I'm out, aside from Silent Surface, Surface, Service, Silent Surface, which is also not a bad game, doesn't make this list, it's also inexpensive, but the game we're going to talk about next is none other than Kings of the Beach! I actually assumed this would be the cheapest game on the list, because like I said, I still see this one in every bargain bin for as cheap as you can get games. Well, it has crept up to that $5.50 price point, but guess what? Kings of the Beach is a sleeper hit. It's not a hidden gem, but it's a sleeper hit. This is a lot of fun. If you're looking to play an 8-bit volleyball game, this is it right here. The graphics are pretty darn good. The controls are really good. Gameplay is smooth and fun, much more fun than I would have anticipated. I didn't actually pick this game up till the past year or so, just because I assumed I would always hate it. Most games that are as cheap as can be aren't very good. Most, not all. But, uh, you know, everyone thinks of Super Spike Volleyball when you're thinking about volleyball games on the Nintendo Entertainment System, but I much prefer Kings of the Beach, much prefer it. And I know that might not be a popular opinion, but it's mine. Third game on the list, once again, 
$5.50. This is a game, one of the first games I can recall playing at my local in and out you know, Quickie Mart, back in the day. I used to play the hell out of it. I loved it then. I still love it now. Do I love the port? What are we talking about? Tiger Heli. As I said, this is a game I can really recall playing in the arcade back in the day. Possibly one of the first games that in and out by my house ever had. in and out by my house is where I played most of the arcade titles that I came to love back in the day. You know, you remember the Quickie Mart by your house? It'd have a game for, I don't know, come in there for a few months. You have it, you'd play the hell out of it. Whenever you got some quarters, you'd go down and pump some in there, get a pop, get some candy. Well, that is exactly what I did with Tiger Heli for, I can't imagine how many quarters, but a lot. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this as well. It's a top-down shooter, it's pretty fun. It is a definite arcade to NES disappointment, the phrase which I have coined twice now. But like the game I mentioned earlier, Operation Wolf, just because it's a disappointment doesn't make it bad. It's still fun, just not as fun on the NES. You've got power-ups, which are cool little helicopters. Sometimes you get the bomb, but you always want to get the helicopters, which gives you additional shooters, sometimes forward, sometimes to the side. The graphics on this are okay. Really like the arcade graphics, but you know, we're talking about the NES here. The controls are, however, very tight, which is part of the fun of the game. If they weren't, it would be extra, extra difficult. The game is already difficult as it is. I find the scrolling on Tiger Heli to be extra slow. You know, that doesn't ruin it for me, but if it were a little faster, it'd be a lot more fun. My favorite part of this, not only in the arcade, but on the NES port, was always the hovercrafts, especially the part where you got the dual hovercraft enemies coming at you. That was always hard as hell. When you beat it, you pretty much knew you were coasting from then on. That was the hardest part in the game. This was another game I used to draw maps of in school instead of paying attention. I don't recommend you do that, but I know I've mentioned it before. And I'm curious to see if any of you out there used to draw maps of the arcade games or Nintendo games or video games that you played back in the day in school instead of paying attention. As you can see, I picked this one up for the cool price of $1.99. So this was also a solid investment as well. What uh, This came at April in 2016. So I've had this suck so in six years it's went from $1.99 to $5.50. Look out! This next game on the list also has a $1.99 price tag on it. Do we got a date? The date has been rubbed off, but it does have a $1.99 price tag. And that game is one that you probably never think of if you even knew anything about it. It's kind of obscure because it's a zapper only game. Doesn't make it bad, but it makes it tough to play. I don't pick this one up often and just say, hey, let's throw it in. But the game I'm talking about right now, that I would throw in, that I'm gonna throw in, is Gotcha. Before we talk about the game, who remembers Gotcha, the guns from back in the day? Remember the commercials? Gotcha shot out that little, little paint dart, boom. Really sucked. Seemed like it was cool. I always wanted it like everyone else because of the commercials, but I never had it. And then one person in my neighborhood got it and I realized it sucked, and I didn't want it anymore. But we're not talking about the toys, we're talking about the game. And this is a cool format for a video game, and it doesn't get enough love for sure. Could it be because of the LJN rainbow on the cover? No, it's because it's a zapper-only game, so you can only play it if you got your CRT TV. It's a capture the flag style. You got your little, it's a, it's a map, I don't know if you can call it that, it's really just kind of a line, shows you from start to finish, but you know, you, you get your way, move your way to the right to capture the flag, move your way back to the left. The graphics in Gotcha are pretty darn good indeed. I like them a lot. You know, this game is just fun. Uh, a couple years ago when I got myself a CRTV, 
And I took out Mike Tyson, thank you very much. I could never beat Mike Tyson until I hooked it up on that TV, and then it was a breeze, but we're not talking about that, we're talking about gotcha. When I had that TV hooked up, I went through and played all the Zapper games that I was unable to play and hadn't played in so long, and I had a lot of fun. And to be honest, the one I had the most fun with is gotcha right here. And even though I said that the gotcha guns themselves were really crappy, you know, because of the commercials and you were kids, so in your head, you always thought it was going to be fantastic. Well, this really captures the essence of what I thought gotcha was going to be. And as I said, unfortunately, this is a zapper only game. So the game capture footage here you're looking at is uh, the best I could come up with. I made it happen. But... You know, you're getting the gist of it. It's not a review of this game. It's just me talking about how I'm a firm believer that this game is worth $5.25. And until they come out with a better way to play Zapper games on a flat screen TV, I know that they're working on it and they got some things out there, but I've heard they're not so great. Until they come out with one that works really good and I get it. Gotcha is going to continue to fall into obscurity. But for $5.25, it deserves to be on the list. Last game on this list is possibly, aside from Operation Wolf, the most well known and popular of games on this list, and it is most definitely the most hated due to its difficulty. This game is truly NES tough, and it's, if it were just a little easier, it would be such a good game. And, buy you Billy, right? You know exactly what I mean. If this game were a little bit easier, and they made a little, little tweaks here and there, it would be way, way up there in everybody's favorites. But instead, it's in the favorites to hate. I've always been a big fan of Bayou Billy. Back in the day, my buddy Brian lived across the street from me. He had it, and so we play it all the time. I mean, obviously, no matter how difficult the game is, when you play it all the time, you get better at it. I know that much younger back in the day gamer got pretty far in this game. I don't believe I ever beat it. I can remember getting to the end, unless I just remember Brian getting to the end, but he was a few years older than me, and it being his game and being older, he definitely was better at it. I like how it's got some multi-genre in there, you know? You got the board where, well, aside from the side scroll and beat em up boards, you got the board where you drive in the Jeep. Then you've got the zapper board, which is actually a lot like Gotcha. The graphics are very similar as well. I thought it was weird that when I was capturing footage for this, I noticed, it's like, huh, those two games, well, the board on Bayou Billy and Gotcha are very, very similar. No one's ever mentioned that before. To my knowledge, no. No one's ever mentioned that before. But I had always had fun playing Bayou Billy. I still do have fun playing with it, but then after a little while you get frustrated. I got, I didn't do bad playing, playing it this time to capture footage for this. I like a lot about this game, the premise, the graphics, the multi-genre, as I mentioned. The storyline is your typical girl got captured, but it's pretty out there with the story. I don't think you could get away with some of the stuff that they have in it. You got some, well, we just, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, even with the difficulty, The Adventures of Bayou Billy, in my opinion, is a pretty solid game. Well, well worth $5.21. So right there is five games on the Nintendo Entertainment System worth playing for five bucks. Now, I'm not gonna beat up this NES prices video topic anymore. One, because I can't really think of any more topics to cover on it. <laughs> but also, we went through the gamut from the most expensive to the $5. Now, to prove it, the cheapest five games on the entertainment system, Nintendo, are as follows. I'm going to read them off so we can't do a video on it. I'm going to tell you about them here. Play Action Football at $3.29. That game really sucks. Golf at $3.25, which does not suck. If you throw golf in and play it, especially on two-player, you'll have a good time. 
John L. a quarter pack of ball? $3.11. I'm not sure which is worse, play action football or John Elway. I know Mega Dan would say play action, but the game that was formerly the cheapest when I was looking up prices just a month ago, it's anticipation coming in at $3.03. It has been taken down by the cheapest game currently on the Nintendo Entertainment System for $2.95. Wheel of Fortune. There you have it. Five good games to play at $5. And the five cheapest games on the system. Golf could have easily been on here. It's not. And I'm not sorry. But I've got six beers to drink. Six cheap beers. So I'm going to let you go. Thanks for tuning into my channel. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And until next time, YouTube, keep it retro! Thumbnail!